Are you looking to deploy a web application? Well, Zeet offers a solution that gets your web application from localhost to serving live web traffic in just five clicks. What I just showed you is the entire process, and all you need to get started is a cloud provider account and a GitHub repository. Simply link a cloud provider like AWS, GCP, or DigitalOcean and point Zeet to a GitHub repository and it will do the rest. There's no need to deal with the complexities of firewalls, networking, or servers. Zeet does everything for you and your application is up and running in minutes. In this video, I will be doing a complete walkthrough of Zeet, deploying a Python Flask application to AWS. But if you're using a different programming language, framework, or cloud provider, this video will still be relevant as Zeet can deploy any modern framework to all major cloud providers. So if you're looking to easily deploy your web application to the cloud, stick around and watch this tutorial. And make sure to stay until the end where I'll go over my favorite features of Zeet. Alright, so to get started, use the link in the description below or just go to zeet.co and sign up using your GitHub or Google account. When you first sign up, there's a walkthrough to help you link your cloud account and deploy your first application. This onboarding process should be enough to deploy your application. I myself was not ready to deploy my application when I first signed up, and when I logged off and logged back in, I ended up in a dashboard that looks like this. So that's where we're going to start this tutorial from. Now the first thing you're going to want to do, if you haven't already, is to link your cloud account. And to do that, just head on over to the cloud section, and then click on the button to connect a cloud account. So you have quite a few different options here of which clouds you want to connect. I'm going to use AWS here in just a moment, but if you're on GCP or using DigitalOcean or Linode, you can connect those as well. But since a lot of you guys are probably using Amazon, that's what I will demonstrate here. So all you need is your Amazon account ID. So I'm just going to go ahead and paste in mine here. And then uh, once you do that, go ahead and hit add. And uh, we can see that the account is set up, but it's not connected. In order for it to connect, you need to first authorize it with IAM. So just click here and it should open up an Amazon console here. You may need to sign in if you're not already signed into Amazon. But basically what this is doing is it's just creating a cloud formation template to connect your AWS account to Zeet. So I'm gonna go down to the bottom here and uh, oh, you need to make sure to acknowledge this, otherwise you're gonna get an error. But once you select that and hit create stack, uh, it should create the stack. And in about half a minute here or so, uh, it should just show as connected. So I'm gonna head on over to Zeet and I'm just gonna speed up the video here until it's connected. And look at that, it's connected as I was talking, so no need for that. Let's uh, move on to deploying our application. So just head on over to the Deploy tab. So to start an application, uh, you just go to one of these different options here under Start an Application. So you can connect a GitHub repo, use a Docker image, or deploy a managed database. So we're going to be deploying a Flask application here from a GitHub repository. So we'll just hit GitHub. And then we want to connect our GitHub repository since we haven't connected it yet. So we'll hit connect. And here, this is asking for permission to your GitHub repositories. I'm going to select a specific one and just search for Zeet. And uh, I'll also have this one in the description below if you want to use it. You can just fork this repository and uh, use it for your own account and deploy a Zeet application using that. Uh, but let's hit install. And now you can see that we can select this uh, repository and just hit deploy. And now we're presented with two different options here. We can either deploy a Lambda serverless function for our application or use Docker and Kubernetes. Now Docker and Kubernetes is a very expensive option. So unless you're working for a company that has this at your disposal, I would not be selecting it. I would go with the serverless option, which is very, very affordable. And you'll be able to see the pricing predictions uh, once we get the, to the deployment here. So we'll hit serverless. And now we have the option to change the default port. My Flask application I have set to listen on port 3000, but if your application is listening on a different port, you would just change that and then hit continue. You can see here that since we're using Lambda, the estimated cloud cost is free. 
since it's going to be using the free tier Amazon resources. So this looks good to me. Let's go ahead and hit deploy now. And you can see here that it's uh, brought us to a new page here and it's going through all the different build stages and you can see the commands that it's running here. So it's going to install the requirements.txt that are in the repository and then it's going to run python3 main.py. Now if you wanted your build commands to be something different, you would change that here and you could also change the entry point that Python's using to a different file name or you could change the entire build method like you could use a docker file and it would just take in the settings from the docker file so that's another good way to do it and of course if you're using a different language it, I think it would auto detect it and you could change it here and you also have the ability to change environment variables so if your application needs specific environment variables injected into it you would do that here now looking back up here I can see it's in the deployment stage I actually like going to the skip onboarding button and it takes us right into the application interface and uh, I find this is a much cleaner interface to see exactly what's going on. So you can see that it's working on the main commit right here. It built out the code and now it is deploying it to AWS. And then there's three different sections for our logs here. Uh, we have the build logs, the deploy logs, and the actual runtime logs. We can see right here that lots of activity is going on here in the deploy logs. Basically, it's deploying the Amazon resources for the Lambda function, the API gateway, and whatnot. Underneath the build logs is basically the image that gets built and pushed to ECR, I believe. Yeah, if you look at it, it looks like it builds an image and pushes it to ECR. So that's what the Lambda function is going to use. And then if we head down to the bottom, uh, we still don't have runtime logs. I think it's still deploying. Uh, we don't have any traffic yet. So let's go back up to the top. It says our application is deployed. So we should be able to visit it. And uh, we just click this button here, which is the actual endpoint. And there we go. We get hello world, which is what's expected. Now, if you want to have a look at the application that I actually deployed here, it's in my GitHub repo. So you can see we have the main.py and the requirements.txt for it to install. So you could just go into this main.py and uh, customize your Flask application here. So if I made any changes to this file, Zeet would detect it and redeploy my application. So that's a good thing to demonstrate here. If I just go edit and then just go this application is updated and commit the changes and then head on back to Zeet. We should see in a few seconds here that it detects that a commit happened and Zeet's going to go through the build and deploy steps again. So since I'm an impatient person, I'm just going to refresh this page and just see if it's doing anything. And yeah, it looks like it's already deploying and uh, just going through everything in real time. So we'll just give that a minute to finish updating our application and deploying it. And let's just go through the other tabs here. So we have this deployments tab. So we can see our first deployment uh, when the application first came live, when we first deployed the application, that was this one. And then uh, when we made the commit changes, you can see that it's uh, going through that deployment currently. And this is just going to give you a complete history of every change that happened in the application and the build and deployment that happened for it. If you go on over to the logs tab, you can see the actual application logs. So up here was our original get requests. Now, if you go to the settings tab, this is where you set all your application options, just like I showed during the deployment. So if you wanted to adjust any of these parameters or change the environment variable, this is where you would do it. Network would change the port. You can put in your own domain name and you can link databases here. And if you ever wanted to delete your application for any reason, uh, you go to danger zone and then you have the option to either pause the application or actually delete it. And this will delete all the cloud resources. So I'm not seeing any more updates here. So our application must be done deploying. So let's go back to overview and click our endpoint again. 
and you can see that our application got updated. So you can see how painless it was to actually deploy our application in the first place and then making the update, it just automatically updated our application. Now Zeet has a lot of different features. I'm going to go through the interface here and show off some of them, but a lot of them you'll just figure out by going into Zeet and just sort of exploring by yourself. So I visited the application using this endpoint before, but you could visit active deployment and this actually brings you there as well. They also make it easy to see your code here. So if you click here, it'll open up your GitHub repository. So you can always get to your code and have a look at that. If you go back to Z, you can go to the AWS console, it brings you right into AWS and shows you the AWS resources that it created. So you can see this is our Lambda function. So if you had any reason to actually want to go into AWS and have a look at the resources there, this makes it very easy to reach. Now let's head on back over to Z. And you can see that you have this drop down here. So this is our production environment, but you could create multiple different environments. So I'll just do that right now and just create one called dev. And then we're just going to copy our application. And before we hit deploy now, let's hit check settings. So say your development environment needed different environment variables. This would be a good place to change it. And then once you did that, you would just hit uh, the save button and this should deploy it. If we go on over to overview, we can see that a build is pending and we're in the dev environment and our production environment is still live and active. So you can see how easy it is to spin up different environments on demand if you need them. Now, some other common features that you should know about in Zeet is if you just go on over to people, this is where you could add additional team members if you're working with someone on a project. Now, the next feature I want to talk about is support for Kubernetes clusters. So let's head on over to the clusters tab and uh, we don't have a cluster currently connected. So if you wanted to connect a cluster, you would just click here and then you have the option to provision an EKS cluster or connect to an existing Kubernetes cluster. So if your application needs to be connected to a Kubernetes cluster, this is where you would do it. Now, since Kubernetes clusters are quite expensive, we're not going to go ahead and click this. Instead, let's go back to our deployment and you can see it refresh there. So now we have two different deployments and I actually don't like this interface. So I'm going to change it to this view. And now we see we have our Zeet Flask application. Uh, with two environments, we got dev and production. And if we just go to dev, into our application, and then visit the deployment, we can see that the application is working in our dev environment as well. All right, so that's all I have to show for Zeet. I hope this video was helpful. Now there's links in the description below, both to my GitHub as well as to Zeet. So if you wanna get started with Zeet, go ahead and get started with those. And if you're interested in learning more about software engineering and other DevOps topics, go ahead and check out the other videos on my channel. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.